सो डे स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल पी सी एम अकाडेमी एंड माई सेल्फ प्रोसिंद मल्लिक एंड वी आर इन ए लेक्चर सीरीज और आई डी जेम मैथमेटिकल फिजिक्स ओके एंड द लास्ट क्लास आई हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट सम मीन वैल्यूज थियोरम यू नो रॉलिज थियोरम एंड लैगरेंज मीन वैल्यू थियोरम एंड वी हैव सीन दट द लैगरेंज मीन वैल्यू थियोरम इज द मोस्ट जनरल केस ऑफ रॉलिज थियोरम एंड वी कैन रीच रॉलिज थियोरम फ्रॉम लैगरेंज मीन वैल्यू थियोरम एंड ऑल्सो वी कैन जनरलाइज द रॉलिज थियोरम टू लैगरेंज मीन वैल्यू थियोरम नाउ टूडे आई विल डिस्कस अबाउट अ मोस्ट जनरलाइज मीन वैल्यू थियोरम एंड दैट इज टेलोस थियोरम ओके सो हियर लेट मी डिस्कस अबाउट टेलोस थियोरम एंड फर्स्ट आई एम गिविंग यू द स्टेटमेंट ऑफ टेलोस थियोरम ओके व्हाट इज द स्टेटमेंट लेट मी सी फर्स्ट दैट इफ देर इज अ फंक्शन एफ ऑफ एक्स एंड इट्स फास्ट एन माइनस वन डेरिवेटिव बी कंटिन्यूस इन द इंटरवल इन द क्लोज इंटरवल ए कोमा ए प्लस एच एंड यू नो इन द प्रीवियस मीन वैल्यू थियोरम दैट इज द लैगरेज मीन वैल्यू थियोरम I have used the interval a comma b, and instead of b here I have used a plus h. Okay, so this is a comma a plus h, and here h is very small actually. So this is the interval, and the function is f of x, and its n minus one derivatives. Okay, be continuous within this interval. So this is the first criteria, and the second criteria is f n x. That means we we have uh, denote these things as as n times derivative of f of x. You know, we we have expressed uh, first derivative like a prime x second derivative like f double prime x so in in that case if we talk about the n times derivatives of any function generalized case then we have uh, actually denote this thing like f n x so this is nothing but the n times derivatives so f n x exist for every value of x in a comma a plus h that is in the open interval then there is at least one number theta such that this f of a plus h can be expanded like this and here theta is very small and is actually between 0 to 1 okay so theta is a fractional value you can say which is lies between 0 and 1 so this two are the criteria that if a function f of x and its first n minus 1 derivatives be continuous in this interval in this closed interval and at the same time if f n x exist for every value of x in the open interval a comma a plus h then there should exist a number theta where theta is 0 less than theta less than 1 such that the f of a plus h can be expanded like this that f of a plus h f prime a plus h square by factorial 2 f double prime a plus dot dot you can see here h cube by factorial 3 f triple prime a a and At the last term, there is the n term that is h to the power n by factorial n into f n a plus theta h, and this is sometimes called remainder. Okay, so this is nothing but the Taylor's theorem. Now we can reach from this Taylor's theorem to Lagrange's mean value theorem because I have said earlier that this is the generalized mean value theorem. So now let me see that how we can reach, okay, from here to Lagrange's mean value theorem. So now let me put just n is equal to one here. Put n is equal to one. So if we put n is equal to one, then what we will get? We will get f of a plus h is equal to f of a plus. If we put here n, then it will be h divided by factorial one h to the power one divided by factorial one into a prime a plus theta h. Okay, this n is equal to one means this is the first order differentiation. So a plus theta h. So it means if we rearrange this equation, we will get This f of a plus h, okay, minus f of a is equal to a prime a plus theta h divided by h. Now you know this is nothing but the Lagrange's mean value theorem. Okay, this is the Lagrange's mean value theorem. And uh, this is not the conventional form. Actually, in, in in conventional form, what was the form? Let me relate this form with the conventional form of Lagrange's mean value theorem that you can understand easily. Okay, so. Let me do it. So in that case, we have the interval a comma b. Okay, and here the interval is nothing but a comma a plus h. So here b is replaced by, you know, b is replaced by a plus h, and so b minus a should be called what? A plus h minus a, a plus h minus a. So that will be h. So b minus a is h, and b is a plus h. So you can. You can form here from here. So f of a plus h is nothing but b. So f b minus f of a divided by h means what? B minus a. 
is equal to what we had f dash c but here what do we have we have f dash a plus theta h so c is obviously a plus theta h and this is obvious because what is c c a less than c less than b so the value of c is between a and b and here you can see this, this theta is between 0 to 1 theta is between 0 to 1 so if theta is between 0 to 1 and if we add some some uh, value multiply with theta then what will be so if we multiply something some h with theta it will be theta h okay so and so if, if this is a you know this is a and this is a plus h okay a plus a so there is some value between a and a plus h that is a plus theta h and this is between a and a plus h why this is between a and a plus h because this theta is less than one so if theta is less than one then it cannot cross the value a plus h so it must be between a and a plus h so c can be replaced by just a plus theta h so if we replace c as a, a plus theta h and b as a plus h so b minus a will obviously h so we can see that if we put n is equal to one then this generalized mean value theorem that is Taylor's theorem will convert it into the Lagrange's mean value theorem and you know also if we put f of b is equal to f of a then we will reach to the Rolle's theorem so overall you can say that this Taylor's theorem is the generalized mean value theorem and all can be derived from here okay so this is the Taylor's theorem now we will discuss about the uh, Maclaurin's theorem and Maclaurin's series as well as Taylor's series in the next class okay